There you are, here I am, and I am here to serve you. Thank you for staying. The news review is up next, and before I introduce my guest, who is right here in the studio, though you can't see him, this segment is brought to you kind courtesy of Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. Now, they ensure that we're able to do this segment uh, for you. So guess what? They're offering free prostate screening, free female fertility screening to all of you out there. I'll say this. Scientifically, it has been proven that people of our race, especially the men, tend to be susceptible to prostate issues. Nowadays, even from the 30s, there are a lot of people who are succumbing to prostate disease. So what are the factors? What should you know? That is why you should get yourself a screen. Now, where can you find Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic? Across the country, actually. Let's start from here in Accra. Spintex opposite the Shell signboard. Then in Kumasi, Kronum Abwehia, behind the Angel Educational Complex. Then we can go to Takrade. I'm talking about the Anaji State area. Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa and Siama and Zima. You can also reach them via the following phone lines 0244 867 068 or 0274 234 321. End point homeopathic clinic. The end to chronic disease. On that note, let me introduce our guest for the morning to help us get into the papers. And uh, if you've noticed that we've been bringing a number of them, it's because they're gearing up for their own primaries across the country. When other parties are doing same, the other major political party, we definitely will do same for uh, them. But Kwame Olympio is an aspirant in the trouble constituency, and he joins us to look into the papers. Kwame. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Um, I'm better than yesterday. You're better than yesterday. Yeah. You don't sound better than yesterday. Um, you sound pretty docile, yeah. pretty, almost <coughs> as though yesterday yeah. had been. Yeah, we, we started campaigning, so uh, we ran through the night, and then uh, I go home around uh, 12. Oh, so okay. So your energy levels are a yeah, bit yeah, yeah, yeah. low. So I have to wake up early this morning to prepare for the show. So. Before we get into the papers, I have two interesting questions for sure. you on the back of what you just said. Yeah. One, yeah. young man, vibrant and all of that, why do you want to go into politics? What is your, what is your raison d'etre as far as politics is concerned? Why? I, you know why I ask that? Okay. Sometimes you speak to some people, and young people, and they'll tell you, you know what, I want to go into politics, and it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. It's all about what they can get yeah. rather than what they can give Good. to society. So what motivates you to want to do this. Okay, um, a very big thank you to you and then a, a very good morning to your viewers. Um, reasons to why I, Kwame Olympio, as I always say, whether, whenever I go for uh, my campaign as my message is that um, I want to help trouble constituency. Reason being that, is that um, we've looked into the past years and then um, People who have led my party have not been uh, successful, have not been fruitful. You're basically saying here that uh, those who have led your party have not been successful. Is it in... Trouble constituency. Is it in terms of securing the mandate and not delivering or in trying to... Yes, yeah, securing, secure... the, securing the mandate and, and not delivering. Okay. And, and the, the fact is that, you know, this um, old, I don't, want to, I don't want to use this word, but you see, these old folks, when they go there, I feel that they go in for their personal interest. They go in for their personal interest. And, and, and the thing is that we, the grassroots uh, people or the, or the delegates, we entrust in them, we put all our hopes in them. And later, when they go, when they go to the top, I mean, it's, it's a different uh, story altogether. Mm. So uh, me being a youth, sacrificing my, my, all my resources, I decided that no, I need to go in and, and secure a space for my fellow um, brothers and sisters, my mothers and my uh, fathers. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me chip in this. I, I have a foundation called the Kwame Olympio Foundation that uh, we seek to empower the youth and then the women. So one of the reasons why I even entrusted that, you know, I need to go into this politics to get the political power to do more. We help the youth and then the women in terms of, uh, in terms of funding, um, giving scholarships to uh, the youth. Uh, there are some people who are brilliant but needy. So mm. what we do is that uh, we secure scholarships for them. Not everybody who has had the opportunity to be in school. So what we also do is that um, 
we get um, workshops for them. We secure, um, you know, what's, uh, there's, there's a name for um, resource persons, yeah. Okay. Resource persons to teach uh, these uh, less privileged people who have not been able to enjoy education before, but they want to do something, for example, artisans and all those things. We, we secure um, these resource people for them to teach them how to do CCTV cameras, uh, plumbing. Uh, um, let me say, uh, the recent one we did was to teach people how to do electrical engineering. You understand, electrical engineering. So these are one of the basic factors we, we, we considered that, you know what, as a young, vibrant guy, in my constituency, let me give this opportunity to uh, my people, most especially my constituents. How hopeful are you that you will sail through? I'm very hopeful. Looking at the contenders you're facing. Yes, I'm very hopeful because um, when you look at uh, my delegates, that's Chobo constituency, um, the total or the sum, total number of uh, delegates sum up to uh, 70%. And the entire Chobo constituency. Mm. Um, How big is your constituency? Very big. We have uh, 14. I mean, what's the population? 14 electoral areas making up uh, 120,000 plus. Wow, it's voters. a big constituency. Very big constituency. Mm. And it's made up of 84% uh, of youth. Wow. Yeah. So um, having a seven. And that's what you're targeting? Yes. The uh, youth population? Yes, yes. It's, it's a youth agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, you could see from the rank and file of the party this year's. Um, election or this year's prime is that uh, the youth are very much involved in uh, this uh, year's prime is not because of their personal gains but because we want to change things there's a quote that's a arise Ghana youth for your country mm. and this is the time I think whoever wrote it I don't know whether it was Felix Beho or you can correct me but <laughs> whoever wrote it knew today will happen right yeah Okay, so usually when members of parliament, ministers, others come on this show, yeah. I always follow that trend, which is what I have done with you. Now, what I have done is to let ordinary Ghanaians who are watching us this morning mm -hmm. know you. Sure. And know what you claim you stand for. Sure. Right? Yeah. So someday, yeah. assuming you get the nod, yeah. and if you deviate, then people would be able to pick this... Use it against me. ...this show. Yeah this video, sure. this segment, mm -hmm. and say Kwame Olympio was not honest. But if you live up to it, should you get the nod, then everybody will know you are a man of your word. Yeah. Our politicians time and again say one thing and do the other. I'm, so I'm a man of my word. Over to you. And I'm man. focused. But let's get into the papers now. The Daily right. Graphic uh, this morning. Prioritize non-communicable diseases to achieve SDGs. The discussants at an event uh, said that. We'll be getting you some details of that. We must entrench fiscal discipline. Kweku Kwating uh, says so. Revenue mobilization drive. Government throws weights behind ECG. More necessary for defraying debt owed power generators. And then retrieve study leave money from lecturer. That's a, a PAC directing the Bolga Technical University. On the back page, single policy for coastal management needed, Professor Hector says so, an airport company to invest in Airport City 2 project. Let's start from the banner headline. So, the government has declared its unflinching support to the electricity company of Ghana to meet its financial obligations to power generators, including independent power producers, that is the IPPs, for sustainable power supply in the country. A deputy minister of energy, Herbert Krapa, who gave the assurance in an interview with journalists on the margins of the launch of the 10th anniversary of the electrical wiring program by the Energy Commission in Accra yesterday, said the current focus was to support the company to retrieve its tariff arrears of over 5.7 billion Ghana cities owed by power consumers. Quoting him, he says, the first step is to help the ECG recoup what is out there. There is one of the ways to help, uh, that is one of the ways to help the company defray some of the debts and make it sustainable. We have a mechanism to ensure that what is received is distributed fairly and equitably to all the players, including the private entities, he stated. And uh, he said the current revenue mobilization drive by the ECG was a step in the right direction as it would make the public utility company more resourceful to enable it to meet its commitments. He also 
uh, gave the backing of government to the policy. Interesting that he says that because guess what? The, some government institutions, ministries, uh, departments, agencies, uh, government-run educational facilities, all of them, a lot of them owe the ECG. And so what uh, can government, apart from the IGFs, internally generated funds that these institutions, these departments, these agencies uh, would be bringing to bear, these ministries as well, um, what else can be done to ensure that ECG can keep on doing its work? Now let's go to page 16, some interesting stories there, and then maybe I'll wrap with page 21 so we can hear from Kwame Olympia. So, the issue of institutions abusing study leave continues uh, to headline Parliament's Public Accounts Committee probing work, with the latest culprit being a lecturer of the Bolga uh, Technical University. Now, the PAC, which is hearing cases of infractions and misappropriations captured in the Auditor General's report for ministries, departments and agencies and metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies in the Northern Zone, has directed the Technical University to retrieve within a month the 236,000 Ghana cities paid to a lecturer, 236 Ghana uh, cities, that is 236,000, who was granted study leave but failed to return to serve the university after completion. Study leave didn't return to the university. Now, the directive is part of PAC's week-long zonal public hearings in Tamale to probe lingering issues raised in the Auditor General's report that have been referred to the committee for consideration. And so that's the first uh, story there. In terms of the, pa uh, the, the PAC, oftentimes we would hear of such stories. And Professor Alna said his organization had reported the matter to the Economic and Organized Crime Office, following which the lecturer had since refunded 103,000 Ghana cities. So if you look at the sum, 236,000, that would leave about 133,000 Ghana cities outstanding. And PAC is going after that. There's also this one here, inflation. I will skip the non-communicable diseases. You can check out that story on page 16. But inflation drops further to 45% in March, and the general price levels of inflation in the country has dropped for the third consecutive month from 52.8% in February to 45% in March. This is the biggest drop. Now, if you look at it, it's about 7.8% percentage points that have been shaved off. This is the biggest drop since the rate reached its peak at the close of 2022. The country has been battling with high inflation in the past two years as the rate hit an all-time high of 54.1% in December last year. As we've mentioned, the deflation is on the back of three major commodities. So you would see that the transport area is still a bit shaky, but we have food inflation, which has dropped non-food inflation, which has dropped, and then we have the non-alcoholic beverages group, which has also seen some deflation. All of them put together have impacted the inflationary figures we're seeing now. And last month's inflation was driven by the furnishings, household equipment division, which recorded an inflationary rate of 67.4%. Now, interesting stories we've uh, considered, Kwame. Yeah. The government throwing its weights behind the ECG. Yeah go and pursue the Perfect. cash, yeah, uh, the, the revenue. Yeah. Then there's also the bit about retrieving study leave money. Yeah. And sometimes people, you know, uh, are given certain opportunities okay. and, you know, state fund it sometimes, but they don't return yeah. to pay their dues. Uh, there's an interesting thing I'll tie to that because, you know, our nurses nowadays, uh, a lot of them have been traveling. traveling yeah. First quarter last year, 3,000 left. Yeah. It's become so dire that the Director General of the Ghana Health Service has had to intervene, yeah. and now the UK has come out with a red list yeah. you know, policy Last, yeah. as far as uh, Ghana is concerned. Some say it is backed by our state trying to influence it, and that if they don't want them to go to the UK, they'll find other places, other places uh, to go to. Go to. Well, what's your quick take on, on these matters? Mm, um, when it comes to, uh, I'll take the first uh, submission, that is uh, the ECG. Yeah, the ECG. I think it is, it is a good initiative um, when these things are being put in place, um, there's no way um, people or residents or state institutions can maneuver their ways out too. Because when I heard the story or I read the story this morning, it's like the ECG, especially the, 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 the new management, they are really doing a good work. I happen to witness a situation whereby a state-owned company is owing over 2 million Ghana cities. 
two million Ghana cities. But here lies the case. When you go to ECG, uh, they don't have meters. We need to purchase meters. Mm. But then state-owned institutions are owning the ECG. So what's the way forward? This is the right move, I think, um, the new management of the ECG. And I give them kudos for that, that uh, they are doing a really good job. So um, they should continue with it. They should continue doing it. And then um, I know definitely uh, we, can, we can recoup or we can get some funds, not only borrow from uh, people or borrow from other uh, countries, but then uh, when we are able to generate our own revenue, I think uh, the energy uh, industry, we can go very far. The energy sector, right. Uh, what do you think about uh, that retrieval of money, though, as far as the PAC is concerned? Time and again, we hear of these infractions or uh, flouting of, of the rules, but um, it keeps coming up. That, that's, um, that's, that's my issue. Every, it doesn't every, appear that these committee sittings make any real impact. They, they, uh, to be honest, they don't make any minimum impact, which I totally agree, which I think it needs to look into. It, it should be looked into very, very well. It should be looked into very, very well because these people come, especially for st steady leave, as it's stated in there, mm. um, take uh, monies uh, so far as um, the steady leave is in concern, but then, then uh, it turns out to be a different story. So I think <clears throat> it should be really looked into, to be honest, yeah. Is there, uh, since you're aspiring to go to Parliament, is, is there something you think could be done practically? Um, because the, the regulations are there. Yeah. So w what else do we need? Is it that tough hand to ensure that I, if, we're, if we're doing this, we monitor you? That, because at least that is what they are doing. Yeah. Now, about 103,000 has been recouped. 133,000 is, is left, if I am correct. So... Yes, 236,000, so 133,000 is left. I think uh, more strict measures should be put into this, in, into this uh, situation. Mm. More strict measures. I know they are doing their best, but more strict measures to put, should be put into this situation. Yeah. Mm. You mentioned that uh, you were better today compared to yesterday. Inflation yeah. has dropped from 52.8% in February to 45% in March. That's yeah. uh, a deflation of about 7.8 yeah. percentage points. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Um, it's, it's, it's just, I, I see it, to, to my understanding, I see it to be just uh, figures, but then it's not reflecting in the market. It's not reflecting? It's not reflecting because I, I for example, I used to buy a spray starch of uh, 12 Ghana CDs. Spray starch? Yes, spray starch. I, I like ironing. I, I see. I, I like doing my own. I don't remember the last time I used to spray yes, that. Pardon me. Yes. I, I like. We, we sprinkle water. We sprinkle water. Yeah. Yes. I use. I, I sprinkle water and use spray that. So that tells you how. Okay. Um, so let me look at the alignment oh, yes. on you. Yes. Ah, looks like a fly could get cut in two. If yes. It yes. Yes. Fell yes. on. You know. This I'm, I'm very particular about what I wear. I see. Yes. You remind me of uh, our box iron days from. Yes. Yes. yes secondary yes. school, yes, not yes, senior yes, high school. Yes. Secondary school. Secondary school. Yeah. yeah. We used to use uh, box iron. You put charcoal yeah. inside. When we iron and you see the shirt, you see yeah, this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. So I as I was saying, I used to buy a space touch of uh, 12 Ghana CDs. That was in February. February this year? No. Or February uh, last year? Last, no, uh, December, sorry. December, December last, last year. year. Okay. That was okay. when inflation was at its highest. I was at its highest. peak, actually. I right. used to, um, no. So what happened is that I used to buy, those days, I used to buy a, 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 a space touch for 45 Ghana cities. 45 cities. 45 cities. It's mm. still 45 Ghana cities. Okay, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. When it comes to inflation and deflation, the yeah. mere fact that it is said that because they consider they have over 200 but items. I am. No, 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 hold on. They have over 200 items in yeah. the basket. Yeah. And they, they sort of strike an average sure. based on what commodities are in there. So, like I mentioned, yeah. you would see food uh, inflation actually declining, okay. non food declining, uh, non-alcoholic beverages declining, but there are some that are still, you know, mm -hmm. in the mix, either um, accelerating a bit yeah. or sort of remaining steady, which is why it has not gone down to, say, 20%, but it is at 45%. Okay. Uh, then again, inflation depends on what you have in your basket. So if all I buy is mankari, yeah. coco yam, yeah. and plantain, okay. and a few other things, okay. My inflation will be reflected by food items, by and large. Maybe my electricity consumption is very low. Oh, yeah. But if you're using two 
air conditioners mm -hmm. and you're buying spray, uh, spray stacks and uh, I'm not saying it's a luxury, but sure. it depends on what is in your particular basket. And you will not see, if they say this, it means it's been measured at the start of the month and you cannot uh, really expect that everything will reflect as as the inflationary yeah. or deflationary rate. What what I can say is uh, I put my shoes into the normal Ghanaian who is selling or buying at Mokola mm. or or Kainshi. <clears throat> the fact of them, uh, the mere, uh, the the fact is that so far as, um, it doesn't reflect in their pockets. Mm. They don't see the essence of it. I am a grassroots person and then uh, I I really I am I'm really down there. Mm. I, I see how people feel. So if you tell me that inflation has reduced from a, a whatsoever a percentage to this percentage. 52.8 to 45. To 45. It's not reflecting in my pocket because one way or the other, when I'm, I'm buying low electricity, I'm putting uh, the cost of the low e electricity into a different thing. Okay. You understand? Mm. For example, I buy space touch for 12 Ghana cities as a den. Mm. Now it is twelve. Uh, it is forty-five Ghana cities. Okay. But then I used to buy electricity hundred Ghana cities in a month. But now I'm buying electricity, um, let's say ninety Ghana cities. Now, mm. still, it's, it's, it's not relevant because I still buy. Um, I when I calculate the cost of uh, spray starch, that is the uh, the difference. It's 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 in um, the cost of the, my electricity. So it's it's still the same. There are some interesting comments coming through. Isaac Eshan says, uh, this inflationary record for the month of March is a grave falsehood. Uh, which, uh, which of the prices of local and foreign foods has dropped in our Ghanaian market since February 2023? This is just to woo the IMF for their financial aid to Ghana, period. And you say, uh, please, Mr. Host, which foodstuff prices have dropped in the market? So here's the thing. The Ghana Statistical Service does not do politics, okay? They, they crunch the figures. They do what is out there. It's a basket. And you could also go out there and, you know, look. Now, the fact that they strike an average doesn't mean, like I explained, that everything out there would reflect some lowering in prices. In fact, you will go out there and meet some things still high. It's, it's, it's a general appreciation of what prevails. That is why even they would break it down region by region and say the inflation in maybe OT region is this, the inflation in maybe the Greater Accra region is that. You would notice that here, because there's a concentration of people, because also it's uh, the capital, there tends to be a lot more inflation in Accra and uh, also nearby Kumase. Uh, but this one says, good morning, watching you live at Yaru. Uh, this one Ninsa Labijala Camp. Uh, do you know the place? I don't know the place. It's, it's supposed to be... I don't know whether it's in your constituency, but the person says, my regards to uh, Kwame Olympio. Yeah. Uh, Trobu. So, I don't know. Maybe it's Men in there mention it, mention it, somewhere. Mention, mention anything. Yeah. So, the, the, the name is Salia Mankama. Yes, but from... Uh, watching you live at Yaru Ninsala Bijala Camp. <laughs> That's what. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got it now. Okay. I got it. All right. Yeah. So uh, those are the stories as far as the Daily Graphic is uh, concerned. Any stories from your end? The Ghanaian Times newspaper. What's yes, the day um, this morning? Well, I'll see uh, blacklist 2,812 uh, churches and others to remove names from a uh, register of companies. Okay. And then the story says that the Office of the Register of Companies, that's the ORLC, has announced that it will begin the process to remove names of 2,812 organizations from the Register of Companies. Such entities do not submit their five years annual returns and financial statements by the end of this month, April. The affected entities include churches, clubs, unions, associations, non-governmental organizations, that is both local and foreign, charity organizations, foundations, entities incorporated under the companies limited by guarantee. The ORLC says the behavior or the action of the entities in the con contravention of section 128 of the Companies Act 2009, Act 992, which enjoins such entities to file their annual returns and financial statements. The ORLC has stated that if the 
entities fail to do the needful, then beginning from June 30th, 2023, it would for the very first time be fully implementing the Section 128 of Act 992, which states that where a company defaults in complying with the filing of annual returns, the financial statement, and company, and the company, and every officer of the company that is in default is liable to pay the register an administrative penalty of 25% units of each day during which the default continues. And it also states that the penalty unit is currently equivalent to 12 Ghana cities, meaning 25 penalty units will, be, um, will, will amount to 300 Ghana cities, which we think the ORC has waited for too long mm. in not cracking and whipping in order to make organizations captured in this boost comply with the law. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, the, the story there. Is that the only one you're going to be doing from uh, um, the newspaper? Yes, um, I think I also saw uh, this. I mean, yeah, you just mentioned it uh, earlier. UK the government UK stops. UK government stops. Uh, Maybe you could give uh, us some details about that story. <laughs> Personally, I have, I, I, <laughs> my wife is a, is a health worker. Okay. My wife is a health worker. So it's a personal issue for you? Yes, it's a personal issue for me. I think the terms of conditions for these uh, health workers, mm -hmm. most especially the nurses should be re reviewed. Uh, I don't want to disclose where she works uh, because of security. No, that, 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 that is, that is because of security point. reasons, but mm. she comes every time and, and uh, the stress level is too much. And the I, I do know that they work brutal shifts, brutal hours here. Yeah. I have friends, doctors, uh, and I keep mentioning that uh, Quite a number of my colleagues in the health sector last year, a lot yeah. of them told me, and before long, yeah. they had left the shores of the country. Doctors yeah. and nurses, yeah. you know, in, in the health yeah. category. And I don't know whether this move by government, at least it is a move, supposing it, it is emanating from here, uh, which is why the UK is sort I, of creating a red alert when yeah. it comes to nurses coming from here. That, that, that should tell us that um, the Ministry of Health should uh, revamp the terms of conditions and the terms of service Terms and conditions, terms yeah. of services. Terms of, terms of service for, for these uh, health workers because the system over there is different from the system over here, which mm. I perfectly agree. But at least, not for anything, it should, be, it, should, it should be reviewed because they are traveling out there because of the terms of conditions there. I happen, my, my in-law my in -law, um, is, also, uh, is also a nurse. My grandma is also um, a nurse and... Mm. I think I'm married, I'm married into a, a nursing family. family. So right. I know how nurses are being treated outside there mm. as to compare to here. Mm. Although that the fact that um, our service is different from uh, their service, but I think it should be reviewed, to be honest. It should be reviewed. I don't even need to go into the stories or whatsoever um, Ghanaian Times is saying, but then what I can say is that... Um, the terms of service should be reviewed. All right. Terms of service should be reviewed for health sector workers. Let's get into the Daily Guide newspaper very quickly. MPP NDC chase IGP over Mahama and Brian Echampong. Uh, those are stories there. University Don lords educational uh, reform. I, I like the way we like using University Don. Don. Uh, uh, a Veep rescues boy and Baumia beats Allen in MPP primaries uh, survey. Quite a mm. pro-Baumia uh, number mm -hmm. of stories I uh. see this morning. Uh, interesting developments, but let's get into them. Uh, page six, I'll start from there. Uh, no matter what, when our politicians aid uh, uh, someone, <clears throat> we should be able to get into the details. So Vice President uh, Baumia has shown love to the 13-year-old young boy who is in dire need of a prosthetic leg. Frank Jilima from Nansongdo in the Nanumba North District in the no Northern Region had appealed for financial support during an interview with the Daily Guide. The support was to cater for Frank's prosthetic leg and other medical expenses at the Tamale Teaching Hospital to enable him walk uh, as well as go back to school to pursue his dream of becoming an engineer in future. Now, 
Upon reading the story about the plight of the young protege who is in the business of using cardboard and empty cans to manufacture miniature vehicles, trucks, drones, houses, and airplanes, Dr. Baumia decided to come to his aid. And um, <clears throat> that is the story uh, there. It says uh, Dr. Baumia was touched by the plight and... Uh, he told the paper that a presentation had been made of 10,000 Ghana CDs. That was a cash uh, donation made. There is also Baumia beats Allen in MPP primaries. That's according to a survey. What I find interesting here, the fact that uh, Global Info Analytics has been coming out with surveys time and again, some, a lot of them working against the new patriotic party and sometimes against uh, the vice president, whom we all know is lacing his boots to, to contend for the flag bearership. But... When, I guess when it works, then that, that is uh, interesting news and it can be published. But anyway, a new survey conducted by Global Info Analytics, a polling company in Ghana, has revealed that Vice President Dr. Mohamed Dubaumia is slightly leading in the upcoming presidential primaries uh, of the ruling New Patriotic Party. The poll conducted between March 31, 2022 and April 9, 2023 shows Dr. Baumia leading Alan Kwejo Chemarating, former Minister of Trade and Industry, among MPP voters with 2% after obtaining 39% compared to the 37% obtained by the former minister. NPP Member of Parliament for Asin Central, Kennedy Ohine Japong, is in third place with 23% of the votes among uh, voters. So those are the interesting uh, developments. But in the event of a runoff, the poll showed Mr. Chamanting leading 57% to 43% among all voters and 53% to 47% among NPP voters. So that is the story uh, there. I'll just wrap with page six, talking about the MPP and the NDC chasing the IGP to arrest Mahama and Brian A. Champo. So the two leading political parties, the governing New Patriotic Party and the main opposition, National Democratic Congress, have filed separate petitions before the police administration for the arrest of two political figures. The story is there, of course. They even add Johnson S. Kitsia and some of his comments in the past. What do you make of the comments of uh, Brian A. Champo in Quo recently? We will not ha hand over power to the NDC. Ensida, Ensida, Ensida. But it's been rationalized uh, by members of the MPP. What do you think? And w since you are with the NDC, yeah. what do you think about distasteful comments that have been passed by members of your party in the past? Um, thank you very much for the question. Um, when I listened to, or when I watched the video, um, I, got, I was very disappointed, to be honest, because uh, Why? Um, of the distasteful um, comments that uh, came up from uh, Brian Champon. Mm. I wasn't expecting, as a, as a new minister of Agric, um, you know, when you were <coughs> with humble beginnings, we all remember when... He's been there before, though. You yeah, know. I know he has been there before, though, but you could, you could tell uh, clearly when he was being vetted how humble he was. And then and today you come up and then and, and it's like um, the whole world should uh, surrender to you. Do you find that to be a threat to our democracy? Definitely. That is why we are calling for his arrest. Mm. Yeah. And then the one thing, aside everything, you see, the young or the youth, we look up to people like, I mean, Brandy Champon. I mean, I respect him very much, and he has really um, inspired a, a lot of people, despite that he's at, on the other side. But then when you do... His business acumen, yes, what he has done. Yes, what he has done. I, I, really, I really look up to him uh, one day. But whatever comment he mentioned or whatever he said, I mean, was, was a reckless... Uh, decision or reckless statement he made, of which I totally disagree um, what he, he J said. Just a final point, because yeah. we have just about a minute to yeah. go. If, if you think what he said was reckless, yeah. uh, you remember when now President Ekufuado said, or oh, die be die. Yeah. Later, yeah. he actually apologized for yes. that. So, Former President Mahama yeah. also said, you know, boot for boot and do or die and all of that. Do or die. And, and some have said, um, he has not apologized. So if we're going to treat Brian the Champon this way, then we ought to treat them as well. You remember the statements by Johnson X, Esedu and Kessie as well yeah. that have been cited. What do you think about that? Um, it was the situation <clears throat> surrounding um, uh, whatever he said. Whatever he said is based on the situation that uh, surrounded him. Um, I don't think um, whatever, I'm not being sarcastic, but uh, I feel that Whatever Johnson is here in Ketia said that our national chairman was not so much of a threat to the people of Ghana.
Okay. Yeah. It, was it wasn't so much of a threat, but it was a threat. It wasn't. If you say it wasn't so much of a threat, <clears throat> so much of a threat yeah. it means there was some um, semblance. We just threat. we just wanted to make <clears throat> the people of Ghana know that we 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 are very focused. We are very conscious. Mm. Um, these people they have their means and ways to ridicule uh, elections and all that. So rig, yeah. To rig elections. Yeah, so we are, mm. we are, we are very uh, vigilant this time around. So I think that was what uh, he, he tried to say, not anything harmful. All right. But when it comes to Brian and Champon, with the situation that, you know, I've always said that these people saying breaking the eight, breaking the eight, <coughs> they're not just, yeah, it's not just a slogan. It's not just a slogan. You think they mean to rig the election the, yes, to achieve that? Definitely. Definitely. That is why... But, but uh, without any evidence, how can you say that? From the statements uh, even Brian H. Uh, said or mentioned, it even tells you everything. That is why we are calling for All right. this apology. Uh, Prince Sapon, you say you're watching us live in Kuwait and that you are enjoying the program. We're glad you are enjoying it. Let's just wrap with some headlines in some 15 seconds. So graphic business, help Ghana shoulder debt burden, IMF pleads. And then it's time for spring cleaning strategies to stimulate your business in a stormy weather. And of course, we are in a stormy weather. Then first corporate bond on GSE, that's the Ghana Stock Exchange, oversubscribed. What's the, what are the headlines from here that we can wrap with? Um, from the, the business, business finders, it adjusts prices to reflect in improving economic situation. So as I just mentioned earlier mm. in the, in the um, Ghanaian times, whatever inflation uh, or whatever happens, if it doesn't reflect in our pockets, okay. to be honest, it, 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 it will not work. So the Ghana Union of Traders we, Association. We, we, we don't have... Time, no, but we you, don't can have just, time. you can just yeah, do that just just in a, five the, the Ghana Union uh, Traders Association has urged all members of the business community to respond responsive uh, positively to changing trend and adjust prices to reflect in the exchange. All right, and Guta has been talking about that yeah. a lot. As we end uh, the segment, brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, they are offering free prostate screening, free female fertility screening. Locate them in a cross Pentex opposite the Shell signboard, Kumasi Kronumabwehi, and behind the Angel Educational complex, Takra De Anaji State Tema Community 22, Techiman Hanswa and Esiama Enzema. If you'd like to call, which you should do, reach them on 0244-867-068 or 0274-234-321. Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. Kwame, it's Thank been good you. having you this Thank morning you very on much. the show. Thank, Thank you, you for joining the conversation. Kwame Olympio is an NDC aspirant in the Tobu constituency. And that's how we cap off uh, the news review. But up next, sports. Yesterday, Real Madrid dishing it to Chelsea. Two goals to nothing. Can Chelsea recover? And AC Milan also in action. All of that in sports coming up next.